Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell Matthews here. Now, based on the data, one of the groups of people in Canada here that have suffered the most from high unemployment numbers have been students and recent graduates. So it has a lot of people wondering what was included in the budget that was released this week to help those people who have really been struggling in the job market. Well, that's exactly what we're going to go over in this video. I've been combing through the document and I found all the different mentions of students in this budget. Uh, and it includes things like a doubling of certain grants for students, help paying off student loans, as well as relief for student loan interest as well. Again, we're going to get into what all of this means more specifically just in a moment. But before we get into the information, if you haven't already done so, check out the links in the description where you can open up your own investment account, or you could use coupon code LAUNCH to get 50% off the Canada Money Mastery Program, where you can learn everything they should have taught you in high school about money, investing, personal finance, all that good stuff. All right, now let's dive into this budget and specifically how there's going to be help for students in the future and and whether or not this is enough. All right, so this is the section of the budget that covers everything relating to students. Now it's underneath Canada's youth and there's sections of here for, for children as well, but they also take this all the way up until university age students. Uh, and they make note here that young people have been isolated at a time where life is normally marked by studying, vibrant and growing social lives, and how that simply just hasn't been the reality for the past over a year now, and how that can be difficult when people are trying to find their paths. They note here that young people were among the hardest and fastest hit by this whole pandemic situation, but the supports that they're providing may not have you believing that they actually want to provide as much support as they're talking about, but we'll get into that in a moment. They go on here in this section just talking about what they have done in the past throughout the pandemic to help, largely the Canada Emergency Student Benefit, uh, which hasn't existed for quite a while now. Um, but then they go into uh, uh, telling you what the uh, the new programs are going to be, what changes are they proposing to make in this budget to to help students. Now remember some of the things inside of this budget, well they still need to be passed through the House of Commons and the fact that it's in this budget doesn't mean that it's 100% coming, but it does show you what the government wants to do and what their plan is going forward. Now, the first section here is providing relief from student debt. Now, this isn't really like the, the plan that Jagmeet Singh and Anami Paul of the Green Party have put forward to eliminate some student debt, forgive some loans, but it should help at least a little bit, or at least the, the Liberals hope that it will, and it will be enough to win the support of students in the future. You can decide whether or not that's the case for you after you, you hear all of this. So they talk about how they had a six-month grace period before the pandemic where people didn't have to pay back their student loans and, um, and didn't have to have interest growing on those student loans. Now, they're they're proposing here, and I'll show you, that they want to waive interest on student loans for an additional year. Uh, so the government proposes to introduce legislation that would extend the waiver of the interest accrual on Canada student loans and Canada apprentice loans until March 31st, 2023. This change has an estimated cost of $392.7 million dollars in that year. So what they're essentially saying is like, hey, all the way until March 31st, 2023, anyone who has a student loan, well, we don't want to be making money on that student loan. So we're not going to be charging you interest on these payments. Now, it does still seem that you're going to have to pay the principal amount of it, right? The amount of the loan that you're paying back, but it seems like the interest won't be added onto this. So you'll see your payments go down a little bit, but it uh, you'll still have to make the payments. It's not like a pause like it was for the first six months of the pandemic. So that's the first support that they've, they've put in here. Uh, and then they also want to enhance the repayment uh, assistance plan. You might have heard of an RAP, a RAP. Now that's a Government of Canada program that's supposed to help certain students as they're leaving their education, as they're leaving post-secondary college, university, help them to pay off their loans, especially for people who are not making a lot of money in the careers that they're going into directly after school. You can Google RAP, Repayment Assistance Plan, Government of Canada, to find out exactly how the program works if you didn't already know about it. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful for you. But they want to make changes to this repayment assistance program. They say Budget 2021 proposes to increase the threshold for repayment assistance to $40,000 for borrowers living alone so that nobody earning $40,000 per year or less will need to make payments on their student loans. Previously, if you were making under $25,000 per year, well, then that's when you would be eligible for this repayment assistance plan. But they're looking to bump that up to $40,000 
dollars. And for families in larger um, uh, larger households, they want to um, bump up that number all the way up to uh, sixty three thousand seven hundred and thirty five, I believe, up to a household uh, with four individuals, and that uh, that's going to be indexed with inflation. So inflation um, every year, your money loses a little bit of value as inflation goes up, right? The Bank of Canada says that they're targeting 2%, but it could be more or less. So they want to have these numbers go up or down with inflation or deflation over time. So it stays uh, the same relative to people's spending power. Again, they use the CPI to predict this this spending power, which is not the best indicator of inflation, but it, it, it still will at least bring these payments up over time. And so that's just going to make it more accessible for that repayment assistance program. Again, you can Google RAP, right? Uh, repayment assistance program to get in more information from the government of Canada about exactly how that, that works. Now, that's a help for people who are out of school already and are starting to pay back their loans. But what about for people who are currently in school? Well, that's what this section is. It's titled Doubling the Canada Student Grants for Two Additional Years. So this is just a short term support for the next two years and it'll will go back down in the future, but let me explain to you exactly how this works. So the Canada Student Grants, um, they it's it's re it's money that they give to students through I believe the National Student Loan Center, um, the NSLSC I believe it is is the uh, is like the bank for these these student loans, but they'll also give out grants, right? And grants just mean it's like a loan, but you don't have to pay it back, of course. And back in 2019 for full time students, this was around three thousand dollars, but now as of 20. 21, they want to boost this up to six thousand dollars, doubling the student grant, the the help the tu- the help to pay tuition that they've been giving, and they're going to try to do this until 2023. And then, of course, if you're part time or a student with dependents, well, those rates will be a little bit different. But you can see them here in this chart. I'll clear it right there for you, and you can pause if you want to take a look at how this could affect your individual situation. And there's something important to note right here. I'll zoom in a little bit for it. Uh, and they say provinces and territories that do not currently participate in the student loans program will continue to receive equivalent compensation from the government of Canada for their own student financial assistance programs that offer comparable benefits to the Canada Student Financial Assistance Program. So all of that is just to say certain provinces function a little bit different for how they give loans, who's the one that's giving the loan. So you'll have to check in with your individual province to see if this uh, this change would apply to you. So it's going to be different across the country. And they also want to expand access to supports for students and borrowers with disabilities. And they go on to say the government is announcing its intention to extend disability supports under the Canada Student Loans Program to recipients whose disabilities are persistent or prolonged, but not necessarily permanent. Previously, these enhanced grants and repayment assistance programs were only applied to students with permanent disabilities. Now, the government wants to broaden this definition of disability to not only include lifelong disabilities, but also temporary disabilities. So this could help out certain students who are struggling with certain short-term disabilities throughout the time that they're in school and provide them access to some of the same supports that people with long-term disabilities will also be able to receive as a student. And then they try to tackle the whole problem of how hard it is to get a job as a student who's just leaving their education right now. It's uh, one of the worst job environments to enter into in recent memories. So they try, they're trying to address this. But uh, as for someone who's applying for these jobs, well, you're not going to really have to do anything for these to take effect. So let me explain how it works. They have the student work placement program, the youth employment and skills strategy, and the Canada summer job strategy. Now, all of these will send money to business owners and different employers who employ students when they uh, when they're able to actually hire a student it can come in the form of either like a wage subsidy or even bonuses directly to those companies for hiring those young Canadians right so nothing that a- an individual student would have to do it just should in theory make more jobs available to more students over the long term hoping that this will give people a start the start that they need in order to work their way into a company or or start up their careers in a time when it's traditionally difficult to do so even without the pandemic and now with it, they're hoping that these supports will sort of bridge that gap. So to sum all of that up, let's start with students who are currently in school right now. Of course, you remember the Canada Student Grant, that's going to be doubled if this all passes through, taking you from, if you're a full-time student, $3,000 up to $6,000 of that grant to go towards tuition and other student spending. So again, if this passes, that's the support that current students could start to see. But what if you're somebody who is uh, who's already out of school trying to pay off their loans? Well, what we went over today was that they're going to make it more accessible to get into the RAP program, the repayment uh, 
uh, repayment assistance program. So you can look that up to see if you're eligible. This is a lot more people are going to be eligible. Again, if this passes, if this budget passes, if it makes it through the House of Commons, there's a couple question marks, le question marks left here. So make sure to subscribe to the channel where I'm going to be keeping you posted on all this. And then the other thing for students who have student loans and are slowly starting to pay them off, well, it seems like they're going to try to extend until 2023 the pause on the interest portion of national student loans, right? So whatever portion of your student loan is uh, handled through the, the Canada, Canada's program, the NSLSC, that's the National Student Loan Program, well, the interest on that, you're likely not going to have to pay. The government of Canada is saying, hey, we shouldn't be making money on students who are struggling right now, but you probably still will have to pay a, a rather large student loan payment, uh, but just not have to pay the interest portion of it, right? It's all just going to go towards the principal or the amount of the loan you're actually paying down, not the portion that's going to interest, right? So these are the major changes, as well as connecting students with more jobs by giving more money to employers who employ students, right? So that's the entirety of the support for students. And I'm really curious, what do you think about all of this? Do you think it's enough? Students have really been falling through the cracks through all of this, let alone people who are just entering the workforce now. It can be a challenging time out there. I have friends that are around that age and they're, they're struggling right now. It's tough to get a job, especially when so many of these industries have been so heavily impacted by the pandemic, like so much has been in everyone's lives. But let me know what you think. Is this enough? What else should they do? Is this something that you would support going forward? Or do you think students should suck it up and, and get a job in the skilled trades like some people are saying. Let me know what you think about all this down there in the description. And again, if you haven't already done so, check out the links in the description. There's the Canada Money Mastery Program, 50% off with coupon code LAUNCH, where I cover all the things that we should have been taught back in high school when it comes to money, personal finance, investing, all of everything that's going to affect your financial future. So check that out if you're interested in it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep on supporting Canadian content just like this. And with all of that said, thank you so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time. This channel is supported by viewers like you. Thanks channel members.